Is that just for people in poor areas? I thought uh, that was going to be for oh, anyone. That's for everybody. That's what I thought. But what I it just... will do is give, you know, the, the people who can afford it now choose private schools mm -hmm. or something. But if you give the money as a voucher that mm -hmm. the government puts up per student mm -hmm. to those that are poor, they too can choose. But also, we envision the voucher system is not just for private schools. If the kids want to take that money and go to a, a different public school, then they only have to be allowed. The whole idea is not only to help the people have some choice, but to make the schools competitive. That, by golly, they got to pay attention to how good they're doing the job. Sure. It will be reflected in the drop in attendance. Well, I just wasn't sure. I thought that that was for everybody, and that would yeah. you know, be a big oh, yeah. advantage for people in parochial schools. Yeah. But I, when I read that, I thought, well, maybe it was just for. Mm -hmm. No, we we just we've pointed to we're pointing that up because we don't think that many people realize. I tell you, the uh, I met with a group of black leaders the other day. They are just heart and soul for this because they know that there's just too many schools in the inner city where. They pass a kid to the next grade, whether he's learned anything or not, just to move him on and get rid of him. And there's an awful lot of that goes on. I had a black mother, that's when I was governor, come to me and she said, you know, don't talk to me about busing or whether that's right or wrong or anything. She said, keep our children in the grades they're in till they learn what they're supposed to learn in that grade. And then she told me. She had a son who had a high school diploma who couldn't read his own diploma. Mm. Yeah, he was a graduate oh, of high school. That. Well, you know how many colleges have had to put in a course called Bonehead English. Yeah, that's, that's for that's for freshmen to come in and that haven't learned what they should learn about English in high school. Another mother told me, this was a black mother, told me that her son got up every morning, she assumed he was going to school, and then found out on her own that for 10 weeks he had been leaving the house and playing hooky and the school never, not a call to find out where is he or why isn't he in school. 10 weeks that he hadn't been going to school. Does Rudy write well? Oh, yes. No. That's some belt you have on today. Hmm? That's some belt you have on today. Hmm. Ranchero's Vistadores. <laughs> Where's that? That's that, that group in California, I belong to it, that have kept alive for 75 years or so the old Spanish tradition of visiting the missions where they would ride for weeks. Well, we come together for a week's ride and you have a camp and so forth. And uh, it starts at a mission and then you just ride and, and around this whole area and, and have two camps that you can stop at one or the other at night. In the beginning, you just carried a bedroll and do the ground, but now they have a regular camp and you have some hometown of entertaining at night. Oh, that's that. nice. And of course you can imagine from all over the country people come with their horses and, and this thing. And you can imagine that what we all look like by the end of a week <laughs> out there in the woods. So every once in a while out on the road at a banquet or something, some guy will come up with his wife and he'll say, you don't remember me, we met at that Rancheros, Vistadores. And I take delight in looking at him all dressed up and so forth. And then I say to his wife, I never saw this man before in my life. <laughs> <laughs> well, do um, they all ride Western or do some people yeah. ride Western? No, all, that's it. all have to ride Western there. Counting down, 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, mark. That 
French heroes are so nationally known, you know, they have a constant waiting list of hundreds of people. And do you have to be a very good writer? Do they check your writing ability? No, or is it no, just but you're a horseman and you want to go for that kind of a life for a week. This is a test of the audio circuit from Camp David for President Reagan's radio address, which will begin in one minute from our yes, mark. He it Counting down, 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, so that we could mark. The next voice will be the President of the United States with his radio address from Camp David. It will start in 30 seconds from my mark. Counting down, 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, mark. Ten seconds, mic's on. Stand by. The first national holiday for Martin Luther King Jr. will be celebrated this Monday. But Dr. King's birthday fell this past week on Wednesday. I spent a good part of that morning at the Martin Luther King Jr. Elementary School in Washington, and believe me, that was the place to be. I've got a pen pal at the school, eight-year-old Rudy Hines, and he's kept me up on the doings at the school and what he and his friends are thinking about. So I wasn't surprised that in spite of their age, the children at the King School knew all about his life and why it had meaning for all of us. Martin Luther King believed, as I and so many Americans do, that our country will never be completely free until all Americans enjoy the full benefits of freedom. It is now over 17 years since his death, and enough time has gone by to get a sense of the progress made by minorities in America and by America in the area of equal justice since 1968. I think it's fair to say that we've come a long way in the pursuit of racial fairness in our country. We have a lot to be proud of, but nothing to be complacent about. We still have a way to go. We're committed to a society in which all men and women have equal opportunities to succeed. And so we oppose the use of quotas. We want a colorblind society, a society that, in the words of Dr. King, judges people not by the color of their skin, but by the content of their character. Vigorous enforcement of the civil rights laws continues. More employment discrimination cases were filed by the Justice Department during our first administration than during the previous four years. And we have successfully prosecuted more criminal civil rights cases in more parts of the country. We've also continued strong support for the fair housing laws. I agree with the late Dr. King that our country won't be free until we're all free. But I take it a step further. Our nation won't really be prosperous until everyone in it enjoys a share of the fruits of prosperity. What progress have we made in this regard? Still not enough. Record high employment, lower tax rates, lower inflation, dropping interest rates, and continued economic growth have helped Americans, and that includes black Americans. The policies of the past five years have produced the biggest economic expansion since the 1960s. Because of these policies, about 400,000 black Americans moved up and out of poverty from 1983 to 1984. A record 10.7 million black Americans are holding jobs. In fact, blacks have gained an average of 40,000 new jobs a month for a total of 1.5 million since the recovery began. In addition, the median family income of black Americans adjusted for inflation rose almost 2% in 1984. Another measure of expanding opportunity is minority entrepreneurship. And there, too, the news is encouraging. The Commerce Department reports that the number of black-owned businesses increased 47% between 1977 and 1982. 
By the way, over the past three years, minority firms have enjoyed $15 billion in government business and at least another $15 billion with private sector companies. Now, none of this happened by accident. The economy is expanding because from the beginning, we made it clear that one of the prime motivating intentions of this administration was to get the economy going again. And it was clear the way to do that was cut tax rates, stop penalizing initiative, and sit back and watch the fireworks. All of us have benefited. The poverty statistics show John Kennedy was right when he said, following his own tax cuts, a rising tide lifts all boats. So we've done some boat lifting the past few years, but it's still not enough. We can do better. We can reform our tax system, make it fairer, and lower most people's tax rates. We can also get spending under control and keep government from demanding more and more of your money. For years now, we've been asking for enterprise zones in depressed areas, areas that would get tax breaks to attract the businesses that create jobs. And in education, we propose the educational voucher system in which families that live in poor areas can use vouchers to send their children to any of a number of schools, whichever they think is doing better. No reason parents shouldn't be given more freedom of choice, and no reason schools shouldn't compete for students. The answer to the question, how are blacks doing in America, is better than ever before and still not good enough. There's work to be done. But if we continue to allow the economy to expand and continue to work for a more perfect society, the people of all colors will prosper. And isn't that what Dr. King's dream and the American dream are all about? Until next week, thanks for listening, and God bless you. I ran over about five seconds. Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's okay. Second hand soon enough. And I did like that. <laughs> <That's okay. laughs> I'm sure you forget it. So I don't even know what the market don't need to, but we're declining. That's it. So, you know, you're about to find I wonder how long this weather's going to last. Right. The what? I said, I wonder how long this weather's going to last. Not long enough? No. I think well, last night they were talking but it went about out. cold wave. Maybe by the time it's going to catch up with us. Yeah. But can you imagine? Probably rain. A little bit of rain, but it should be fairly pleasant for the rest of the rest of the rest of the next day or two. A little little bit of rain tonight. Thought, yeah, that's what I was hearing about rain. Yeah. It's very warm. It's about 60 degrees down in Washington, so it's 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 warm all over. Funny. Our thermometer says 70 degrees, but that's in the sun. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, bye. Thank you. Okay. Okay. He doesn't miss a beat, does he? Okay. And you can't get up and put a jacket on without him.